Now, when you're creating a mock-up, you might go and import your logo onto the photo that you want to place everything on top of. You might go and press Command or Control T, right click and warp that particular logo, and then just constantly try to manually go and warp this into place, do all the manual blending that you need, and you'll probably spend 10, 15, maybe 30 minutes getting all of this put together. But what if you could instead just create yourself a template that's drag and drop and does all the work for you? If you don't think that's possible, let me quickly show you what we're going to create here. In this alternate example here, we have a final version. Everything's already blended. And now we could just go and drag and drop any logo into this photo and it will automatically be blended in. All we need to do is double click on this layer, find a new logo on our computer, drag and drop it into that canvas, grab the move tool, resize it as we would like, disable the previous underlying logo, press command or control S to save it. And now Look at that, we have a blended, distorted, all of the things that we needed, it's automatically done for us with this template. So when you're creating mockups, if you can spend the time once to create a template like this, you can just reap the rewards over and over again, no matter what design you throw into the photo. So let's go and create this for ourselves from scratch. At a high level, essentially what we're going to do is create a container that we're going to apply all of our warping adjustments onto, so then that way, any time we put something within that container, we're able to apply the same blending and the same warping adjustments to whatever we add in later. That way our life is made super easy. So to define this container, we'll first create a shape layer. I'll access the rectangular shape tool here. The color doesn't matter. And I'll just set the stroke to transparent so that we know the exact size that we're dealing with. From there, I'll just go and click and drag out like so to define a general area that I want as the visible place for our logos in the design. So I'll let go here. And now with our shape layer created to turn this into a container that will allow us to recycle all of our adjustments and blending in the future, we just need to right click on that shape layer and then go down to convert to smart object. With our layer now converted to a smart object indicated by this icon here, we can go and apply any of our blending adjustments as well as any warping adjustments too. To begin, let's go and blend the color of this layer into the shirt. Since we're working with a white shirt, I'll change the layer blending mode down to multiply, which is going to blend the current selected layer nicely into the highlights. However, if you're working on a black t-shirt, well, in that case, we'd want to go and use the screen blending mode instead. So use multiply for white, screen for black. If you're working with a colored t-shirt, you can try either or. But I'll leave this set to multiply, and now I'll go and do some warping adjustments. I'll press Command or Control T to access free transform, right click, and I'll begin by choosing perspective. I'll go and now just drag these corners around like so, so we can change the angle of this to match our t-shirt a little bit better. And then I'll right click and go to distort. And now I can just go and adjust the single corners to have them fit a little bit better at different angles individually. Once you're happy with the adjustments, I'll press on done. And what I'm going to do next is go and add in a logo. So that will help me with some of the distortion process rather than just working on a solid color. To add our logo into this container, we just need to double click on the thumbnail of this smart object. To make this a bit more clear, I'm just going to rename this layer to logo goes here. Now when we double click on this layer thumbnail, it's going to open up a new project tab which has the contents of this smart object. So here is where we can go and place our logo assets within. I'll go and select the baseball logo, drag it over top of the canvas, disable the underlying rectangle, and then use the move tool by pressing V just to scale this up so it fits within the entirety of this canvas aka the container that we defined in the original project. Now with this placed, if we look at the original project, nothing has been updated because we need to go and save our changes back to the original project. We can do this by going to File and Save, or we can just press Command or Control S to save the contents of the smart object back to our original project here. Now with this logo in view, it's going to be a little bit easier to warp things based on the folds in the shirt. I'll begin by pressing Command or Control T once again on the Logo Goes Here layer. I'll right click and I'll go down to Warp. 
Now you can go and click in any of the sections here basically just to distort that logo around. But what I prefer doing for drag and drop mockups is only editing the corners for now. So I'm just going to do that first, pushing or pulling in the corners based on the curvature of the shirt or whatever object you're placing this onto. And once that is warped, I then want to go and deal with any major folds. We can do this by clicking on the split option. I'll choose the vertical split up here, go and align the split somewhere near the edge of this fold. So like here, for example, and then I can repeat this process once again. So clicking on that vertical split, I'll go and place another split in the top of the fold like so. Now what we can do is select these vertical splits that we just added by holding the shift key, clicking and dragging out and selecting the related split that we want to move all at once. So I'll select this one here and then now I can click in the middle and just move this over like so to create this effect that is folding around the specific fold in the middle of the shirt. I'll press the check mark to confirm my changes there so you can see how that is now looking. Pressing command or control T right clicking and going to warp so we're back at this same view as before. I'm going to add one more vertical split going and adding this now on the opposite side of that fold, holding the shift key, clicking and dragging out to select the entirety of that split that we just added in here. And then just like before, I can click on that split and move this over to replicate that fold. I'll then do a similar thing with this middle split, just dragging it upwards to give the illusion of that fold being followed on the shirt. Now we could repeat this same idea around any other fold within the shirt, but in this case, there's only that main one to deal with. So I'll call this pretty much good to go here. Pressing done to confirm my changes. Now we just have a little bit of a ripple around that specific fold in the shirt to make it look more realistic. But at this point, we're still missing that nice blend that would make this logo actually look like it was placed on the t-shirt. Well, there are three different things that we have left to add in. That is using blend if to reveal some of the underlying texture. And then we need to create the highlights and the shadows that can apply over top of this logo to blend everything in nicely. Let's begin with the blend if sliders to access blend if we just need to double click on the empty area of the logo goes here layer, which is that smart object holding our graphic double clicking on this will access layer styles and in the blending options, we'll go to the underlying layer slider. And if you're working on a black t shirt, you'd go and edit the highlights point. But since we want to reveal some of those shadows of the textures of the shirt through the logo, we're going to work on the shadows point of the underlying layer slider instead. So what I'll do is drag this over until we start to see a change. So I'll go over to here. Now you can see that logo is being removed. And at that point, I'll bring it back, hold alt or option and click just outside of the shadows point to separate it into two. And now I can add a feather adjustment for this effect. So as I separate these two points further apart, we have a nice subtle blend showing the underlying texture of the shirt through parts of the logo. If you want more texture revealed and more of the highlights from the original shirt to show through your logo as well, we'll go to that highlights point, hold alt or option now and click outside of it to separate it into two pieces. And we'll pull this over as well to begin revealing some of the highlights and the textures there through our logo. Now what's going on here is essentially we're telling Photoshop different exposure ranges that we want our logo to be visible within. For the shadows point, for example, we're telling Photoshop that from this point to this point within the exposure ranges, so from the darkest shadows through to the lighter midtones, we do not want our logo to be visible. And then same thing with the highlights, we're saying that from this point to this point, we want to have a soft transition between visible and invisible, therefore showing through that nice highlight of the underlying shirt. I'll press OK to confirm my changes there. Now, before we move on to an awesome trick for copying highlights and shadows in the mockup, if things like smart objects, blending modes, warping, and all the other techniques we've talked about so far feel like a lot to remember, I invite you to grab a free copy of my Photoshop Pro ebook, breaking down the most important skills for you to master to make Photoshop feel easy and be able to create projects like these mockups with a lot more confidence. You can grab your copy in the description or pinned comment 
down below. It is totally free. But with that, let's get into my favorite part of this mock-up process. Now, my favorite part of this whole process is adding in the shadows and the highlights from the original image. And this is really easy to do just by selecting, in this case, the shirt or whatever object you're placing your design on top of, and then duplicating it and using layer blending modes to only show the shadows or the highlights. So I'll begin by selecting the shirt just by activating the quick selection tool. Then while that layer is selected, I can just go and paint over the shirt like so. It can be a rough selection. It doesn't have to be perfect. With this selection made, I'll press Command or Control J and then press Command or Control J one more time. So I have two duplicate versions of the cutout shirt on its own layer. Again, it doesn't need to look perfect. We just need the main bit of the object to be seen. With this good to go, I'll rename one to Highlights and the other one to Shadows. I'll then go and hold Command or Control, click on both of those layers and place it at the top of the layer stack. Disabling the highlights layer to begin with, I'll click on the shadows and you'll notice I also added a layer blending mode name. So that is the one that we're going to use and I'll explain why. Changing this down to multiply for the shadows, this will remove all of the whites from the photo, leaving us with only the shadows on this particular layer. That means that turning this on and off, you can see how it just darkens up the image. But I only want these shadows to affect the logo and not anything else. So I can right click on this layer and go to create clipping mask. So now these shadows are isolated only to this logo like so. Now if this seems too intense, which in my opinion it does right now, we can go to the opacity and lower this down to whatever amount you think looks good in your photo and nicely represents the shadows from the original image. Once you're happy with that, we're going to repeat the same process for the highlights, but this time we'll click on that layer and change the layer blending mode to screen, which will remove all of the blacks or shadows from this layer, leaving us with only the highlights. Once again, we want to only apply this to the logo goes here layer. So I'll right click and go to create clipping mask so that both of the highlights and shadows only target the logo. But once again, we have the problem of it looking too intense. So I'll go to the opacity and now lower this down to whatever value you think looks good for your particular mock-up. Now turning those two layers on and off, it just adds a subtle but nice touch to blend the logo a little bit better into the overall photo. But now with all of this work completed, we can go and save this as a PSD file by going to File and then Save a Copy, choosing Photoshop as your format. So then now we have a template that we can open up in the future and just add any other logos into. But again, remember, whenever we want to add a new logo in, we just need to double click on the Logo Goes Here layer, which is the Smart Object. Double click on the thumbnail there to access the contents of the Smart Object. Drag and drop your new logo into place. Disable your previous underlying layer so you only have the one graphic logo or design that you're using. Press Command or Control S to save it back to the original project. And now you have all of the same blending adjustments applied without having to redo everything in the future. So this is really useful if you ever want to create simple mockups for yourself with your own product photos without having to spend all the time manually doing this process for every single design that you use. Now this is how I go about creating drag and drop mockups, but I'd love to know any additional additional tips that you might have that I didn't mention here. You can let me know down in the comments below and while you're there, make sure to grab a copy of my free Photoshop Pro ebook, breaking down the most important skills in Photoshop that you should know to feel confident and work efficiently in the program. Again, it's totally free in the description below and with that, I'll see you next time.